It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and uh, right now we're looking at the fact that Nigerian workers in Libya are now facing heightened threats of arrest and deportation following a pivotal ruling by the Confederation of African Football CAF. The ruling has led to increased scrutiny by Libyan authorities who have launched widespread operations targeting undoc undocumented foreign workers, including Nigerians. As many workers now confront the possibility of detention and forced repatriation, the development has sparked concern over the vulnerability of these individuals and the urgent need for Nigerian government's intervention to ensure their protection and address the diplomatic implications of this escalating crisis. Our guest this morning is Dr. Martin Morgan, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Doctor. Yeah, good morning once again and uh, I hope you are okay. Well, and yes, we've, fine. we've woken up, so yeah, we're yeah. okay. So, uh, like you say, um, every second is a bonus uh, in our Honestly. existence now. Okay, but let's yes. look. Yes, let's look at the the condition now. Something that happened in sports has now escalated into something else. Uh, the word in town is that, uh, according to the president of Nigerian residents in. Uh, uh, Libya, he said that not only people without without papers, even the people with papers, are having a hard time right now. Arrests are being made left, right, and center. And the word is that this money that they were asked to pay, the fifty thousand dollars they were asked to pay as fine uh, by CAF, will be paid by Nigerians. They will make Nigerians to pay this money. And I'm wondering what our relationship with Libya is even over the years, knowing how our people have been treated in that country till now. Well, I think uh, for me, I have almost three dimensions to this issue. The issue of sport or football or how it is supposed to be in that way. But we don't need to go back to the story of what happened to the Super Eagles because we know you and I know that what happened there was a total act of terrorism. Because what I call it from day one, even in the different forums I've been talking, I see it's a terrorist act because for diverting that plane alone, when it was 300 meters to Benghazi and the fuel was not enough, that is a hijacking. And keeping those players and crew with the aircraft, everything down for that number of hours, locking them is kidnapping. Staying there without food and no water and sanitary condition is, is a hostage. So if you put those three dimensions together, this is pure terrorism. And now, for Libya coming out with this type of art, because they were intending gaining some of the three points. Now finding all Nigerian residents $500, like, as if they want to now use it to uh, acquire to pay the uh, car fine 50. It's not the best. For me, it is no longer football. It has gone beyond that. Even I've been issue, I was saying in order for that, I think Nigeria should just break our diplomatic ties with uh, Libya. Uh, I don't want that. A lot of uh, Nigerians there, we have almost 8,000. The issue of data is not there. That is why I, at times I get angry with the Nigerian high commissions and embassies in some of these countries, because even if you go and meet them, you don't have something positive coming out until when the alarm start getting to that point. Because if you go to the various uh, cities of uh, Libya, uh, Misata, Benghazi, Tripoli, and uh, Selenitania and uh, Tripolonia, all those cities, you see a lot of Nigerians who are there trying to cross the desert to, uh, through the Mediterranean. So this type of thing is making us to look as if they keep on getting to human said the inhuman treatment. And I don't know why our Nigerian kids choose going through the desert through Libya. The human inhuman treatment they suffer. They have been arrested by what they call Arab, put there in various jail, in personal jail and tension. They rape the women, they pregnant them, they treat them like animals, and they are still going to that country. The Nigerian High Commission, the Nigerian Embassy, sorry. In Libya, I am telling you, they don't even have enough data about how many Nigerians are in that country. Because we don't know. We um, just see that how the porous borders are. They just cross the border to Niger, from Niger to Tangier or through Boso. So they just cross all these borders to that area. For me, Libyans, uh, for the, I had experience in Tripoli. 
some years back when I, I was trying to go back, I was trying to go to Njamena uh, from Tripoli. I, I, I discovered that the way they treat with the black skin is not the best. Fortunately for me, I was not there as a Nigerian. I was then working for the UN. So uh, it makes it so di different. But because I was black, and it's not good. So for me, in this current situation, I think where we have one of Moselle, who was former, I think he was a Nigerian resident in one of the region in Libya, will tell you that we have, no, we have more than 8,000, almost 5,000 uh, uh, undocumented Nigerians in Libya. Because the embassy they are, well, they are just closed them up there in Tripoli. They don't even know what is happening in Benghazi. So these are the issues we have. So for me, first thing, if they are treating us in that way, one, there should be a, 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 a note verbal, a note verbal, a diplomatic protest letter to the Nigerian government, to the Libyan government. You should call the Libyan envoy at this moment in time to come and explain to the government why our citizens are maltreated, whether legal or illegal. That is not the issue. We need to find out the legality of it, because they have been there. Two and three, we try to find a way of evacuating these guys. My, my worry is that, um, since you're calling this a terrorist act, which a lot of people will agree with you anyway, uh, the thing is, how can a terrorist act like this happen between two countries that was unprovoked? Was it, what was the thing, in your opinion, that led to Libya doing what they did? Because it, it didn't just come off as something that they, they, just, they just planned at the moment. It seems as if it's something that was in the offing. It was, it was being cooked until they had the opportunity to do what they wanted to do, to show Nigeria a lesson. And I'm wondering what Nigeria may have done to trigger this kind of a thing from them. Well, for me, I like I, I said, if you let's talk on the river at the moment, forget about the sentiment that the Maghreb countries are, are mostly racist. I, I'm not, I don't have apology for my word. They are racist. Most of them are racist. So I don't have apology about what, because if you have been to some of these countries, you will not know how to treat the blacks and, and how they maltreat them. But for the Nigerian case, you know, it started for this issue of uh, Afghan qualifying. Fires and the rest. Mm. In fact, they, they, they arrived in Port Harcourt, whereas the venue was to be in uh, Uyo. To, uh, uh, there have been constant call to try to find out about their itinerary, according to the Director of Information in NFL, Dr. Lajuri. But there was no feedback. Only two or three hours to call, they say that they are landing at uh, Port Harcourt. And from Port Harcourt, okay, fine, move your aircraft to Uyo. They said no, they will not move aircraft to Uyo because of additional charges. They decided to come by road. And then prior to that, their Nigerian embassy here in uh, the Libyan embassy here in Nigeria, we are already on ground to receive them and hire other third party vehicles, logistics for them to move. In that type of situation, are you not going to blame the Nigerian government when they were snapping some pictures to find an alibi that they were maltreated? So for me, it's an orchestrated thing. Total orchestrated thing in the sense that I don't see if there's anything that will now help them to say, okay, fine, this is how it is. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. So yeah. I feel that there was something wrong that you and I did not understand. And they just wanted to just paint us evil. So that's the way I look at it. Yes, that's, that's my worry because it shows their actions when they came to Nigeria that they wanted an excuse for something they had already planned to do. And I'm wondering what we, what we may have done as a country to make them uh, want to do that to us. Because the plan came before they arrived in Nigeria, and then they perfected it when we went to uh, Libya. How would you yeah. describe the relationship between Nigeria and Libya all, over the years that uh, could make them do this? <laughs> it has not been very cordial. Let me be very frank. It has not been very cordial. Even during the era of uh, uh, Gaddafi, though... Libya have been helping in training some of the, the other agencies in Nigeria before Gaddafi died. But after that, it has not been very cordial. And for me, I am even angry about the Nigerian authority, the officials who permitted the Libyan aircraft to land in Port instead of you, who gave them the landing permit, the landing right to land their aircraft. Where are the match for to play at you? So these are some of these things we need to also find out. You should not really put the hand the blames on the Libyan authority. We should also add that the, but the Nigerian 
aviation uh, safety or whatever regulation that allowed their aircraft to land in Port Harcourt instead of you, should I explain? Is that the, is, was that the flight path? These are some of these questions. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. Mm. So this gives you a lot of understanding to find out why this act. So at the end of the day, the, when we are going back to play the other one, and the three elements came to play. Like, diverting that aircraft was hijacked. Keeping those guys on the lock and key is kidnapping. Putting them without food, even water, and sanitary condition is hostaging. And those are all spices and ingredients of terrorism. So now, if they are not reverting to the migrants, the Nigerian citizens in those countries, maltreating them on that way, it becomes a diplomatic issue, whereby I feel the Nigerian government should not treat it with levity. Nigerian government should by now come with a communique. Our ambassador in Libya should be in Abuja to explain to Nigeria what happened. And the Libyan ambassador in Nigeria should come also and explain what is their country doing. Otherwise, we declare him personal non grata and let him go back. So these are the situations. And plan about the evacuation of our people. And let our people try to move out from the various regions they find themselves. But how do they move out? We have to, uh, we have to liaise with the IOM, International Organization of Migration, to ensure the safety of so any other Nigerian that is there, whether immigrant, whether illegal or legal. The bottom line here is that we are talking about the safety of the human being in circulation in our country. Is there in the Treaty of the uh, United Nations Treaty about how you treat human beings, how you treat human beings in your territorial area? So for me, we have been seeing a lot of pictures that is very uh, obnoxious, very, very inhuman, that most of the sub-Saharan Africans are suffering in the hands of these Arabs. I, I think we cannot take it lightly. That is my own view. That is the way I look at it. We yeah, should, it, it, it's a, a simple question. A simple question is, yes, you have stated what you think Nigeria should do. A lot of people will buy that uh, idea because we should show that we are giants of Africa. Even if we were not, we should show that we have some kind of uh, pride in ourselves of being a sovereign nation that should not be toyed with just because our citizens are in their land. But I'm just curious, what is it that Nigeria really is gaining from Libya that they must have this marriage? It's not necessary to have a marriage, except there are other trading reasons that you and I may not be privy to know. I don't think there's any, if it was during the era, Libya already is in a disorganized state. Even the, the insecurity we are having in these countries as a fallout of a Libyan crisis. Guys, it's a, as a fallout in the Libyan crisis because we are having a, a small amp proliferations all over the country coming, dropping from that northern axis. It's because of Libya. From Nigeria, once he enter Niger, he start entering to our own area. So these are some of these issues. So what are the positives we are taking from Libya? Are we importing anything, uh, vegetables, uh, fruits from Libya? We can look at alternative. For me now, my concern is the Nigerian em uh, uh, embassy and the Nigerian Foreign Affairs Ministry should be able to coordinate and understand how we can get all these our people out of Libya. Because we cannot uh, afford to start losing them. You and I were here when the Binance guy was in Nigeria. The US government colony was flying back. So what happened to that? So these are some of these issues we should be able to also understand in our own that yes, the diplomatic relationship with Libya is already severe. So what stops us from even furthering severing it? Is it because our illegality of our people who have moved to the Libya trying to cross? Yes, I agree. There may be other socio sociological uh, uh, impact as related to why people have decided to go to the desert to go and kill themselves. I agree that your home may not be too comfortable, but then that is not an alibi for you to go and die in the, in the hands of the Maghreb. So that is my position. Whatever we are gaining from Libya, for me, let me tell you, in the course of diverting that plane with, by the Tunisian pilot, if anything had happened, those guys would have crashed. Yeah. And what do you say? Even getting back fuel was a problem. So is it football we are talking about fraternity? There's no fraternity in this place. Honestly, that is the way I look at it. And that is the way I would go for it if I have my way. I think it's high time 
That's why oh, we, we tell some of these countries that no, Nigeria does not remain a dustbin. Nigeria still remains an elephant, and we have to be treated as such, irrespective of whatever is happening internally. Okay. Oh, well, we'd like to thank you, Dr. Martin, for sharing your thoughts with us. It's a w very worrisome thing, and we hope that uh, Nigerian leaders will take that drastic step that will uh, show that we're stamping our feet and telling them that we are a sovereign nation that must not be toyed with. We'd like to thank you for your thoughts this morning as you had joined us on the program. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Martin Morgan is a public affairs analyst. He joined us to x-ray what is happening to our citizens in Libya. And that's how we wrap it up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for your time this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Thanks for being there. Shh.